let's talk about backups today. The thing you should definitely be doing, but many people kind of overlook or they have a false sense of backup security. Sometimes people have weird services that uh, just sync it to the cloud and then they think, oh, I'm safe. But I really wanted to do them a deeper dive today where we'll go over all the different types of backups, starting with the most basic that pretty much everyone should be doing of some sort, and then moving into more of a business style backup that most businesses should be doing. So with that said, let's get on the desktop and start exploring how we do our backups. Starting off here, I have my Synology drive pulled up. Think of this like Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive. However, with Synology Drive, I have a local box here that stores all my data. I prefer this way because it's a bit more secure and private. When you store things with Dropbox, OneDrive, or Google Drive, all of it is stored with big tech companies. They're not really encrypted, and those companies can look at your data, and I find this kind of a security risk. However, having said that, it's still better than not having a backup. So if you're going to sync something up there and it's important, uh, I do recommend encrypting and I'll make a future video about encrypting your files and using these services. I did one in Linux a while back. I'll try to link that up here, but it's something that you should be at least backing up your really private files immediately. Now, as far as that box goes, here is what I'm using. This is a beast of a box. And you can definitely get a smaller size. They make them as small as two size bays, but right here is a massive eight size bay. I can go up well over a hundred terabytes in just a single storage box. And there's expansions I can do on this as well. But I wanted to start with this because I think you can easily take a Synology drive or a Dropbox style thing. And most users can use this on a whole bunch of things, especially for small business. But I wanted to go ahead and just kind of showcase this box as I've been using it now for several months. Now, here is the basic interface of this Synology box. I will say the benefit to having a box like this is instead of just having all of it stored in your local computer is you have RAID and some redundancy built in. So when I look up and pull up my storage manager, you can see I have about four drives in here, 16 terabyte drives. And one of these drives is not being utilized for capacity, but more for redundancy. So if I do have a failure, I know that I still will be okay. Multiple failures uh, will probably lead to some data loss. But again, that's why we don't just rely on one box to do the storage. As far as disaster recovery, a lot of people might use services that directly back up their computer to the cloud thinking this is a solution. Now, I don't particularly like that solution. I like to have local storage because if you're storing a lot of data, restoring it from the cloud is not very good. It takes a long time. You're gonna have a long downtime and you can't really restore directly to the computer itself because if your computer goes down, you're gonna have to get a new computer and then sync it from there. But as you can see right here, I use something called Synology C2. This is a backup service for this actual box. So even if this whole room catches fire, I lose everything. I know I'm backing up my device or a lot of my data to this one. Now, right now I'm mainly just doing my Synology drive folder because I have 10 terabytes of stuff, which a lot of that is footage and other things. So I might add to this like some of my finished product, but a lot of my work product on my videos is you know about a terabyte in size and, and a lot of each video when you look at all the the clips and things that go into it so backing that up doesn't make sense other than the fact that hey it's over on the box but i don't necessarily want to spend a lot of money storing it on the web so this is a good hybrid type solution but past your files, we need to actually see what, what happens if you actually blow up your computer. That's a, a big problem. Now for Linux users in the past, I've showed Time Shift, which I have a link up here for that. And also I've shown uh, something called Clonezilla is another possible thing where you can actually clone or image your, your full device on, on Linux. You can also do this on Windows as well. However, it's not exactly user friendly. I've done a video on that and it is free. So for those that don't have a Synology box, that's an option for you. However, if you have a Synology box like me over here, they have something called Active Backup. And this is just an absolute amazing thing. You can see all the types of backups that I've done. Uh, if we go into actual the portal here, you can do servers, virtual machines, file servers, the whole bit. 
And I use just have this one Windows PC right here backed up that I do some of my work on. Now for my task list, I do have daily and weekly. I did split these up a little bit, mainly because I kind of OCD about this, but you can easily go into the schedule here, just say, hey, weekdays, or you can say every day, whatever you want to do. And then for your retention, instead of splitting them up to daily weekly tasks, you could actually just say, hey, I want to keep the last this many days and this many weeks. You don't necessarily have to break up the tasks. I just do it because I remember how backup software was, you know, 15 years ago and you didn't have nearly this kind of option so it's kind of just me doing it how i've always done it but for business typically you would keep the last five days or 10 days or 10 business days you would keep the last four weeks and then typically you'd keep the last 12 months uh, depending on your storage needs obviously this can change for me i only keep daily and weekly here uh, in the studio but as you can see, the last update or the last backup here was the 26th. And you can kind of see, hey, okay, let's reverse time. Let's We can restore this or we can edit it. We can go into the little portal and see, hey, I want to grab one file because I changed the file or overwrote something. You can go back in time and just pick something out. Like I think this is from the 18th of February. I can come into my volume. All right, here's my documents. Let's go ahead and pull up my documents. What has changed on this computer? in the past month, let's say. But let's take something in here, like let's say this Windows Lite 2004. Let's just delete this right here. And since it hadn't been changed really since then, I can easily restore this. So let's say I wanna come into here and restore and say, okay, let's go ahead, hit restore, and it'll start this restore process. And look at that. If you want to check on the process, you can always come right here and kind of look what's happening. This is the actual little user agent. So it's very powerful. You can see how quickly you can restore files using this agent. I absolutely love this for any of my Windows boxes. Now, as far as the other things that happen with Synology, I will say it is extremely powerful. I've kind of touched this in the past and I made a little playlist. I'll try and link my Synology playlist up here, but I go into like Docker containers where I'm doing Pi-hole directly on my Synology box. I'm using a Unify controller directly on here, both in Docker containers. So very, very powerful in this regard. And it is Linux based at its core. So I could actually SSH and get a Linux prompt and run commands directly if needed. Also on virtual machines, I do have a virtual machine. This one's mainly just a basic Linux server that I'll use for just testing and those types of things. But I could easily just do whatever I need to do and run that directly on this box. It just is so powerful. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what happens if this box goes out? Well, I have a good little snippet here for you because I wanted to see that myself. So I contacted Synology and they sent me a different box. And I said, Hey, I want to completely just rip the drives out of my old box, slam them into a new box and have it work. And you can do that with Synology. Now there's a little grid, which I'll show right here that shows you how to do that. You can't just pick any box, but there's a lot of compatibility between the models. So I picked, I went from a 1019 to this 1821 plus, both end and plus, And I think that was the common denominator to make that seamless transition. But instead of just telling you that, I wanted to go ahead and I, I filmed this a while back, but I want to show you what that looks like as far as the whole transfer process. All right, it is time to emulate a device failure of Synology and I'm going to replace this right here with this right here. <laughs> this is a monster. But all I'm going to do is take out all my bays right here. And I'm just going to pull these guys out. And I'm going to put in all the bays from that one up there. Since it ends in the same model number, we should have this boot up with those drives. And all our data should be there. So let's see what happens. Okay, on initial boot here, I saw this screen where it's migrating from my my 1019 plus to the 1821 plus. I will say that update only took about two minutes, which is pretty awesome. Now the restarting is I got a countdown of 10 minutes. Let's see how long this takes. 
Okay, I think it was around the four minute marker I heard it boot up. I went ahead and let it run to zero, but since I had a static IP on that older box, it looks like it went ahead and switched it all over to that IP with the same settings. Let's see what happens here. And it looks like everything came in. Let's check storage manager real quick. Sure enough, there we go. I got a RAID 10, about seven terabytes, 80% full. Uh, in a future video, I'm gonna expand this to about 100 terabytes and uh, see what this goes. I'll probably downgrade from a RAID 10 because I'm gonna switch to a higher res video, which is gonna eat up way more space than I'm taking right now, where this was fine for the last couple of years, but uh, it's time for an upgrade to probably 4K, which will make all my videos much more voluminous. Now that's basically how I back up my systems. I will probably be expanding on this and doing more enterprise level things such as clustering and grabbing multiple boxes with failover. You can do all kinds of crazy things with these NAS boxes. And I absolutely love going into the backup realm because when it comes to backups, you can never be too safe or too secure or have too many backups. No one ever says that. They always <laughs> say the opposite. Something happens and they're like, oh crap, please let this backup work. And the one thing I tell you at the end here is test your backups. Make sure you can restore your files. Make sure you can get to them. Because I've run into some people that have paid those monthly fees to those cloud providers, and then all of a sudden they couldn't get their backups down because they never tested the restore process. So test your backups no matter what you do. And with that, let me know your thoughts. What do you use for backups? What's your favorite device out on the market? Obviously, mine's Synology, but what's yours? And if you like this video, give it a like. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.